Hello, Ram here, coming at you with another race from our Virtual Skipper 5. Today we're doing round 8 of the round robin in the Melges Cup. Melges is a 24-foot uh, sloop. We're racing down in Rio de Janeiro, and today it's United States versus Japan. Here's the standings going into today's rounds. The United States has a 6-1 uh, and one record with 12 points. And Japan has 4 points with uh, 4 wins. And here's a comparison of the two boats. The United States has a slight advantage in hull. They're equal in spinnakers. And a distinct advantage for sails and crew to the United States. So let's head out to the water, see what the weather conditions are like. So the weather is sunny, wind coming out of the west at 4-6. And again, 4-6 is considered a strong breeze according to the Beaufort scales with wind speeds 25 to 30 miles per hour or 22 to 27 knots. We'll see how well the uh, AI skippers can handle these winds we saw from the last race kind of a little disappointing uh, make some of these victories less meaningful that the AI skippers don't handle the spinnaker well down downwind in higher winds but we're gonna give it our best and again I'm gonna maneuver behind the Japanese boat follow them along the line and match them tactics uh, prior to the start Boats are deposited on the race course side of the start-finish line. We have to get back across that line onto the pre-race side before the counter gets down to two minutes. And we had no problem doing that. Now in fleet racing, it's a completely different type of tactic than it is in match racing. In fleet racing, you're battling multiple boats. And you don't really care what one does or the other. You're caring more about what the fleet in general does. So you want to sail the best race you possibly can and let the chips fall where they may. Now you still use the same rules of yachting to uh, work out your advantage. And here we are looking at the course. The green line in the center there is the start-finish line. We go to the left around that buoy, back around uh, through the gate, the starting gate, and around the buoy where we are right about now. Turn right, around one more buoy, and then turn left, and that's a mad dash to the finish line. But anyways, in fleet racing, you still use the same rules of the road to gain an advantage over the other boats. But uh, in match racing, it's one-on-one. -on -one. And the rule of thumb in match racing in general, not that it's copied really well in this game is that you really want to stay fairly close to your opponent. You don't want to get too far away from him in case the current, the wind, or some other factors change um, the favored uh, side of the course or whatever. So you stay pretty close to them and uh, you pretty much match them tack for tack, tactic for tactic, and it's completely different in, uh, in fleet racing. So anyways, the uh, Japanese boat is over there on the far edge of the course there. You can see they're deciding to sail away from that uh, starting line. Right now we're looking down the starting line through the committee boat. The starting line is uh, a line between the committee boat and that green buoy in the distance. We don't want to be across that line early and we've got about 20 seconds to the start. Looks like we're going to be a little bit early. I want to think about maybe upping my sails. So I let the sails out a little bit, kill some speed. And now we're down to seven seconds. And we're off. And I did go over early. You can see that flag on the top right. It's the X flag. And that means my boat was over early, so I have to restart the race. Well, what that does is put us very close together. So I had to serve my penalty, go back over the starting line. Another important difference between match racing, which what we're doing now, is when I cross the line early, all I have to do is get my boat completely back across the starting line to the pre-race start, and then come back across, and I'm officially now starting the race. 
uh, in fleet racing, you actually have to go around the end of the line and uh, circle around and come back and start over. If you did that in match racing, the race is essentially over. So right now, we're beating to windward. We're both on port tack. You can see that the uh, boat to the left is uh, green. He has uh, a green light, so I have the right away. But you know, when I tried to luff up, I don't know why. I had a green light. I was the favored boat, and I just got a foul. I was trying to make him actually change tacks, and um, even though I was the right of the way boat, because he was upwind of me uh, for some reason, I'm the one that got the foul. So I'm not really sure what happened there. So now I have to do a 360 degree penalty. And I don't think I had to, because I was a uh, lured boat, and I have the right to use my course to the left if I want. He has to stay out of my way. So anyways, I'm going to get my penalty out of the way early. And see if we can't make it up somewhere else on the course. So that puts him a little bit further ahead. Again, it's just a matter of me sailing the best race I possibly can. So he's to windward, slightly ahead. See these waves rolling in. They seem to be getting a little bit bigger, and the boats will actually surf down waves like a surfboard. They're going up. And now we'll surf on down. So it's still a pretty close race between two of us. He has a slight advantage. He's to windward, and he's slightly ahead of me. Trying to keep that arrow, which is kind of blue right now, uh, green. That means it's at an optimum angle to my boat for this boat speed going into the wind. And that will get me a apparent wind angle, which you can see on the dashboard on the bottom right approximately 30 degrees off the nose of my boat. It's minus 29 right now, and that means it's to the left side. If it was on the other side of the boat, it would be about a positive 29. If it's straight off the back of the boat, it's uh, 180. So I've got to pay attention and take advantage of all the wind shifts, and since he's upwind, he will be turning the wind shift's a little bit ahead of me, so if I watch what he does, you know, I can see if there's going to be a wind shift coming our way that I can take advantage of. And it looks like he's kind of bearing off a little bit to the left. I'll do the same. So that was the mark in the distance we saw there briefly. So we have to pass that on the right side, so the mark will go down the port side of the boat. pretty evenly matched as far as boat speed it would look like uh, not kind of catching up to him he's not pulling away from me on this tack and hopefully that skip will be able to handle spinnakers uh, better than the other artificial intelligent boat was so now we both have switched over to starboard tack there's the mark off in the distance now looking down at the bottom my course over the ground is 208 207 and the course to the next mark is 214. And unfortunately, what that means is I'm going to be a little bit short of the mark. I'm going to have to tag, or if possible, zoom up, use the speed of my boat to go into the wind, kill my speed, and then come back around the course. You can see the arrows on the right side on the compass. The yellow arrow is the um, direction of the current. So you can see it's pushing me away from the, uh, the mark, so it's not helping me, it's actually hurting me, but it's actually hurting the uh, Japanese boat as well. Now you saw what the Japanese boat did, he just made a, a sharp turn to the right and came up. He's doing exactly what I was talking about, use the momentum of the boat to kind of cheat into the wind, help get around that mark without having to tack. If you tack, you lose a lot of time. If you zoom up like that, it's actually an advantage. So what I'm going to try to do is do the same here. you got to watch that you don't hit the mark came very close, but I think he made it, and my boat is stalling out, and the current's going to push me into that mark, so I have to pack advantage Japanese boat, so 
good tactics on their part, bad tactics on my part. And now let's see how well they sail downwind with the spinnaker. So popping the spinnaker, which is the big balloon sail. It's attached to my boat only at the top of the mast. At the bottom, it's attached to a guy pole that pushes it out to the windward side and a rope called a sheet on the opposite corner. And that's all that you have to control the uh, spinnaker with. So right now, it looks like he's doing a good job sailing downwind. We're about both on a, about the same uh, heading. And we want to get that arrow green to keep our boat speed the maximum. He is jived over to um, a port tack, and he is heading toward the next gate. So this race will definitely be more of a challenge. There's the next mark which we have to pass. It looked like on the left side of that mark, the mark will pass it to starboard. So you can see that uh, we passed that last mark about 12 seconds behind the Japanese boat. So the good news is he is controlling his boat much better and it's going to be a challenge to get back up. So we'll do that hopefully by rounding these marks a little bit better than he does. So when you jibe the boat, uh, you change from one tack to another going downwind. The boom actually comes across the sailboat. And uh, right now we're on a port tack. We were on a starboard tack before. When you jibe the spinnaker, you actually have to take the spinnaker pole off the mast. It's attached to the mast on one side and the sail on the other. And what you do is you hook it up to the other side of the spinnaker. So it's pole is now attached to both sides of the spinnaker. You slide the pole over and attach it to the mast and it's quite a complicated process. It takes a lot of crew coordination so we want to get the spinnaker down early before we round the mark so we can turn around as quickly as possible. Again the spinnaker is only a downwind sail and we go across the wind like we are now or into the wind we have to have the mainsail and the jib up. The spinnaker does us no good specifically because it's not attached to the um, stay on the front of the boat. Stays are what keep the mast in place at the front and in the back, and shrouds are what keep the mast in place on the sides of the boat, those black lines you see. So right now we're both on starboard. We cut the lead down from, I think it was about 11 or 12 seconds down to about 7 seconds, so we caught up a little bit to the Japanese boat, but we're running out of time around this next mark. And then it'll be a dash to the finish, and the way they sailed, uh, their sailing down went pretty well. But it looks like we are catching them up just a little bit. We've got good boat speed, 10.2 knots, and we're going to be right on their butt as we go across this mark. Now, they're sailing a little bit higher up, in other words, closer to the direction of wind than we are. And the more you fall off from the wind and the more downwind you go, the faster you go. So that might be why we're catching up because we were sailing at a slightly faster point of sail. But they're around the mark first. There's their uh, time. And we are right behind them. We cut that margin down to 3.4 seconds. We got our spinnaker up. We are slightly downwind of them. We're going slightly upwind, which may be a tactical mistake. We'll see if that plays out to our favor. So we were actually Closing that gap up on the last couple legs, but they are still out in front. That arrow is blue. I need to make that green. So there we go. And there's the finish line over to the left. It's marked by two green boys. We just have to pass in between them. Now, the Japanese boat is uh, getting ready to tack, and head toward the finish line. So there they go. And I am almost out of control and it's close, but I think having the spinnaker up for just a little bit longer was our salvation. I think that pushed us in front of them ever so slightly and now I can fall off the wind and make a direct beeline for that mark looks like the AI skipper is going for the center, which is that yellow arrow, arrow off to the left. 
if he would fall off the wind now and go directly downwind, he would have more speed. He's doing that now. But I think we have pulled out victory from the jaws of defeat there at the last jibe. And we narrowly beat the Japanese boat. So that's it for round eight. Switzerland defeats Germany. Brazil beats China. Australia beats Italy. United States has a narrow victory against Japan. New Zealand over Spain. Spain was a good boat. Uh, Great Britain defeats France, and that's uh, Great Britain's first win. So here's our standings after eight rounds. United States sitting on top with 14 points, followed by Switzerland. Uh, then we have Spain, Italy, Austria, and New Zealand tied for third with 10 points. Japan and France have uh, eight. Brazil, Germany, and China have four, and Great Britain with two. So we'll be back with round nine soon. We'll see you on the water. This is Ram 55. We appreciate you watching. Give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you'd like. Leave some comments. I'd like to hear what you think. We'll see you on the water.